On the line with us is Judd Legum, the uh, journalist and founder of Popular.info. Uh, you can also tweet him at Judd Legum, L-E-G-U-M. Uh, Judd, welcome back. Tell us about, you, you wrote this just absolutely brilliant piece a couple days ago. I, I plugged it on the air, mentioned it on the air. Um, and, uh, you know, I've for a long time recommended people to go over to popular.info and subscribe to your, your daily newsletter. It's really, really worth reading. But you did some really extraordinary, uh, deep, you know, deep journalistic digging on this thing. Tell us about the, the, the right-wing billionaires' plan to use school boards to put Republicans in power so that they can keep taxes down on right-wing billionaires. Or at least that's how I'm interpreting this. Right. Well, I think certainly you're seeing a really extraordinary confluence of activity around school boards on a whole host of issues, you know, that are seemingly unrelated. The mask mandates, that's one of them. The supposed concern over critical race theory, which is taught in law schools, not in high schools or elementary schools. Uh, and you know, other other related issues, what books they're they're uh, carrying in the library. And this is being used to suggest that essentially that there is a nefarious plan on the left to cut parents out, to indoctrinate children. You know, it's expressed in various ways. Right. So. Uh, what's interesting about this is, of course, there are parents who hold these views, but it's being stoked and amplified by a whole host of groups, many of whom, many of which were just formed this year in 2021 and have seemingly vast resources, extensive paid staff, some of the folks who are on the staff of these groups are appearing on Fox News and on other place, places and just representing themselves as parents. You know, and, and they generally are parents, but they also have the, these other activities. And in some cases, they're they're paid uh, for this advocacy. Uh, we don't know the source of funding behind these groups, both because they're so new and because of the way they're organized. But what I what I basically did is if you look at the people involved, you can see, for instance, one of the main groups, Parents Defending Education, the leader of that group has basically spent her entire career in different groups that are funded by the Koch political network. And now she's emerged as the leader of this of this new group that is that is targeting school board. So it doesn't. You don't have to speculate too much to to figure out, you know, where this money is coming from and what's really fueling uh, a lot of this activity. Would you agree with my analysis that the reason why the Koch network would fund uh, school boards to freak out about critical race theory or about mask mandates, which frankly I doubt Charles Koch gives a rat's ass about, um, but that they would fund these things instead because these wedge issues can be used to get Republicans elected who would never get elected if they simply said that their main agenda was to, you know, encourage the use of fossil fuels and, and discourage taxation of rich people um, to get these people elected yeah, I, so that they can then go ahead and encourage fossil fuels and cut taxes. I think that's that's close to how I view it. But let me explain how I how I think of it. And I think the Virginia, and which of course has an election that's coming up in November. Right, one of the this few is, states. This is all being used against Terry McAuliffe, is the case in point yeah. here specifically. Uh, uh, elections now. Biden won Virginia by ten points. Right. So it's Terry McAuliffe. He's the Democratic nominee. There's a guy called Glenn Youngkin, who's uh, the Republican nominee. Glenn Youngkin knows that he really can't fully embrace Trump because. He's going to alienate a lot of people. There aren't enough Trump supporters in Virginia for him to win. Right. But at the same time, he needs to motivate those voters and make sure they can they show up for him. So what this is fundamentally is a rebranding of the MAGA movement uh, across all of these issues that are now being focused on school boards to excite and energize that base. And Glenn Youngkin 
is really leaning into this. He's going to appear uh, in Fairfax County, uh, which is a key northern Virginia county, to make some sort of announcement this evening about schools. A lot of his ads are are based on schools. A lot of the Republicans up and down the ticket are running ads based on these school and school board issues. So it's a way that Republicans are trying to thread the needle and win in a state where Trump is not that popular. He's not Alabama. Oh, or Utah. Uh, another another way to say that, Utah, John. Popular, Alabama or Montana or whatever, yeah. Yeah, wouldn't, wouldn't another way to say that be, you know, basically, uh, A, they're obviously they're trying to win an election, but B, this is a test ground. This, this is the Willie Horton ad of our era, um, you know, which was used against Michael Dukakis by uh, George Herbert Walker Bush back in uh, 1988. And that, you know, we're a scary black guy, scary black guy. And, and Dukakis, you know, wasn't even the, the governor who came up with the idea of letting, you know, people out of prison. Uh, that was the Republican governor before him. You know, he simply happened to be in the governor's seat when that happened with Willie Horton. Um, so, you know, it was, a, it was a, a lie to begin with. But it was a lie that the Republican Party turned into a, a, a huge nationwide meme. And they coasted on that whole, you know, we're tough on black criminals thing uh, so effectively that Bill Clinton picked up that mantra. You know, I'm going to put 100,000 cops on the streets and Hillary talking about super predators and all this kind of stuff. So now it's now it's, oh, my God, you know, they're they're indoctrinating our children about, you know, they're making white people, white children feel guilty for having white skin. And and uh, they're promoting homosexuality in the schools and or immoral this kind of stuff. I, it looks to me like they're testing something as much as they are doing something. What do you think about that? I think that's right. I mean, we're seeing this all around the country. You know, it's it's really it, it's really much more intense in Virginia because of the context in the election. But it's not just happening in Virginia; it's happening in Ohio, it's happening in Florida, it's happening everywhere. Right. And I imagine we'll see a good bit of it in twenty twenty two. But I think you're right, regardless. But I think you're right. If this works in Virginia, if Glenn Young can win, and it's a it's a fairly close election. I think most people are giving us maybe a slight edge to McCullough now, but I think it's it's close. It could go either way. If Glenn Youngkin wins, I think you will see this nonstop. Uh, and so that, so in that sense, I think it really is a, a testing ground for this. For or this even if he loses method. by one point, he was 10 points down when yeah. this thing started. If they can move somebody nine points, even, you know, yeah. even if Youngkin loses, uh, what are they going to do in Wisconsin where the race might be four points? Yeah, I think, I think that's right. I think that's right. And I think that you're going to see a lot of it. That's really why I started digging into it was that I noticed that this was already being injected into, you know, a lot of the 2022 campaigns that are that are really getting started now and will only intensify in the in the next few months. And there is a lot of money behind this. I mean, there are very well financed. They're hiring very expensive conservative lawyers filing lawsuits you know this is not a slapdash operation there's paid staff there's slick websites there's talking points there's FOIA requests it's a very extensive well-financed effort what are the parallels between this effort and the tea party effort to blow up obamacare or at least make sure that there's no public option in it etc um that was also funded by the coke network uh coke political network what you're referring to um, you know, where they were showing up with three hundred thousand dollar buses and transporting people to to the so called tea, tea Party rallies, and and it was treated by the media as if it was you know totally ground you know the grassroots movement when it was clearly astroturf. This you're saying is also astroturf. Um, same people, same strategy, just different topic. Yeah, I think it's definitely related, and I think the the point you make about the media coverage is key. No one is going to cover in a, you know, in in a in a big way just some gathering of Republicans who who are upset at you know Democrats who are in power. But what the Tea Party did was it refreshed that, and it said this isn't the Republican Party. This is. The Tea Party movement, we're this groundswell of opposition. It's it's organic. It's the people rising up, and that's the same thing. And I think using the identity as parents, and, and which is seen as a non 
kind of a nonpartisan position within our political conversation. Your parents, you're looking out for children. You're not partisan. You're not pursuing a particular kind of political agenda. You're trying to do what's best for your community. Rebranding the MAGA movement as this parents movement, I think, has been very effective, particularly at the local level of framing this kind of of coverage and starting right. to shift the conversation beyond Trump we're talking uh, to, into something that's more powerful. We're talking to Judd Legum, uh, who is the founder and, and uh, editor and author of, largely of popular.info. Um, Judd, we have about a minute, uh, I think, until we, yeah. we're gonna hit a break here. Um, yeah. How, it seems to me that this is just an extension of what we've seen over the last, in particular the last four years, it seems, maybe five years, with these bathroom bills and you know trashing trans kids and all the hysteria it was like they tried that they got a certain amount of traction from that but now we know between critical race theory and mask mandates they they think that they've even got a larger universe of traction um, it looks to me like just they're ever since the tea party they've been fine tuning and fine tuning and fine tuning these systems what what say you yeah i think that's right and i think I think it, it has a, a broader appeal than kind of a lot of the anti-trans bathroom stuff, which I think really just appeals to social conservatives. I mean, I think the idea is to make this a bigger tent and, and to quite a wider variety of, of concerns. Right. And that's and that's, uh, yeah. you know, certainly what they're doing. And, and 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 again, this is being apparently driven by right wing billionaires. Yeah, we'll, we'll hopefully find out a little bit more as, as time goes on, but all the signs are there. Yeah, fascinating stuff. Judd Legum, you can read all about it at popular.info. Judd, thanks a lot for dropping by thanks today. Fun. It's always great talking with you.